What's up guys, welcome back to the ASAP Automotive channel and today we're gonna to be doing some power steering upgrades on the old fire chicken, so stay tuned. So guys, we're back at it again today working on my wife's uh, fire hog here, we affectionately call the fire chicken. And today we're addressing up one of the issues that I've had with this thing is the power steering. Already gone through a couple of pumps in this thing, burning them up, and they're brand new pumps, yada yada. We've you guys already seen where we've done the the factory cooler removal and went to an aftermarket one. I still have an issue, it's better, but so about a year ago I started kind of looking around. I was like, there's got to be a better way to this, something to you know to handle this. Because first time you do a couple of like high RPM runs, the pumps smoke basically. So didn't take long. I found this kit, this guy had been making, and I found it on Facebook and some of the forums and stuff and came highly recommended. So reached out to him not too long ago and said, hey man, I said, really interested in this kit and love to do, you know, a good collaboration video and a good install on this. And um, I'm really excited about it. So today we've got Nick here with Fritz Automotive who's going to tell you guys about what the kit is, why it came to be, and all that fun stuff. So, Sure. So this is one of the most worthwhile upgrades you can do to your F body. It utilizes a Corvette style pump off a C5 or a C6. So this is a bearing style pump rather than the bushing style that came stock in your F body. So these are much more durable. These can handle high RPMs, wider tires, lots of abuse. Um, and also to utilize this, I have a GM steel pulley to eliminate your plastic pulley that is liable to breaking, cracking, especially if you've never had to press one of these off before. They're very easy to, to break, so that's also a stronger point. So it also utilizes a remote reservoir. So I have here um, the OEM style clear reservoir that you can actually see your fluid levels in. And if you want it to go a little more showy, I also offer a black aluminum or polished aluminum reservoir with uh, separate fittings, O-rings, and O-ring caps, and um, yeah, and those things are really quality built. You know, they're really nice. Like these aren't just some, um, you know, chintzy reservoir or anything like that. Like it's, you tell it's got really good ceiling surfaces. Sure. You guys can actually see, you know, really nice inside. No shavings or anything like that. And like I said, you know, O-ring cap, all that fun jazz. So this one, the black anodized one, is the one we're actually going with today because. I'm too lazy to keep anything flashy clean, so, um, and I really like the black look, kind of a blacked out, and I know my wife likes that as well, so, and one of the things we're going to be doing today is we're going to take it a little bit step further. This isn't something you have to do in this kit, but I figured while we're in there and for the cost, I mean, I think I only spent like 60 or 70 bucks online for this kit, is the ICT bracket. Uh, it's a billet aluminum bracket there. It's got all the, um, uh, it's just a, a much beefier than the stock cast aluminum which is fine in most applications. We figured, hey, well, while we're in there, and I mean, stock is not an option is our motto, so why not, right? So um, so how did you come to be with this kit? Like what brought you to, what was your thoughts on, you know, your, your process with this? Well, I had my, my 2001 Trans Am, and I had gone through probably about four power steering pumps in a couple of year period. And the car was just a stock LS1. I had four tens in it, it was a six speed car. And I would run it hard on the street and, and just have fun with it. And I kept having problems with the power steering pumps and I had changed the rack, I had put lines in it and it just didn't make any sense to me. So I started doing a little more research into it and figured out it was a common problem and failure point at the stock pump. And I said, there's gotta be a better way. So I started doing you know a little bit of research into it and I, I basically came up with this kit as, as my own solution and I was able to turn it around into something I could market and, and kind of give back to the F-Body community a little bit and um, be able to keep these cars on the road. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and one of the other things too, like we, you know, we talked about earlier was the, um, the fire hazard with the stock pump. Sure. So the, the stock reservoir that sits on top of the pump in these cars, the O-rings are liable to degrade over time and they can actually cause a fire hazard when they leak down onto the alternator. And I've had a few people reach out to me, say, hey Nick, I've had my car catch on fire in my driveway and this, you know, I wish I stumbled across your kit sooner because this is, you know, this has been a real issue. So I've, I've actually been very surprised uh, along the way to hear these things too. So. This setup actually solves a number of problems that we'll show you today as, as we install it and 
you see how everything lays out and works very well together. We've, we've seen a lot of that here in the shop, being that we work on a lot of these F-bodies, is those factory reservoirs, we've noticed a lot of the root cause is, is that plastic, you know, it's down there in such a hot environment. You know, plastic is great in a lot of ways, but it's gonna heat, you know, it's gonna get hot, it's gonna warp, it's gonna distort, it's gonna get dry and brittle. And that's where we see a lot of leaks. Not only that, but like you were talking about, yeah, we've had a ton of issues with the plastic pulleys and having to replace those because they just, you know, just rip apart trying to take them off. Even when you know, we've got a 700 something dollar snap on installer and remover, but plastic is plastic, you know, and they're just not that great. We've seen actual warpage issues from the pulleys and those causing belt issues, sometimes to the point of even throwing the belt or just eating prematurely wearing the belt out. So that's, a, that's one thing I really liked about this kit when looking into it, is it really solves not just one issue, but an actual a host of different issues. So I'm excited, I'm excited to, you know, anytime you can make any kind of upgrades. And this is definitely, he's really got this geared a lot to the do-it-yourselfer. You don't need a full-blown shop like what we've got here today and everything, it's great and all that, but you know, even like um, this installer you've got here, you, you can just easily get that on sure. Amazon. Sure, this, anyway. is, this is a very inexpensive Amazon kit um, because you're going to need to remove and install a pulley yourself. Uh, but once you do install this pulley, if you ever have to remove this power steering pump for any reason, you do not have to press it back off to get to the bolts because the pulley is slotted, which solves another issue that GM had on their plastic pulleys that there were no access holes for the bolts. So anytime you have to remove it, you have to press the pulley. And that, that's another great thing too, because anybody, that, if, if any of you guys that have ever messed with any of these F bodies, especially if you're like me that I had previously had that power steering cooler and upper radiator hose, there's no room. I mean, it is a nightmare to get in there and stuff. It is not fun. So that is huge to me to have that opening where you can just in there and just zip the bolts out, pull the pump out if you need to. It makes it so much easier. Not to mention too, this pump you can easily get on Amazon. That's where we actually got this one because you can't, I, I'm a Delco guy, even though you know, Delco is made in China a lot of times and stuff like that, but you can't actually get those Delco pumps anymore, hardly anywhere. And if you do, you're gonna pay just as much, if not more for a turn one pump, which don't get me wrong, they're great pumps, but the whole idea with this is, you know, it, is a cost-effective kit for the average do-it-yourself, for the average guy just trying to fix a few issues and keep his, keep his car from catching on fire. It's not gonna wanna spend six, $700 on a pump. Now, somebody that's racing one of these things, that definitely has its place and, and they're obviously a great product but what we're focusing on here today is keeping this a budget-friendly upgrade that's going to make you know fix you know a handful of problems here and, and really a good bang for the buck so but how about you man i'm ready to get work and installing on this thing and making some upgrades so let's get at it all right so nothing to worry about too much obviously you want to make sure the car is in park or if you got a six-speed car make sure you know it's in neutral or you're in gear with the parking brake on and all that fun stuff Make sure your car is safely, you know, chalked up and everything that's on you guys. We obviously put that disclaimer in every video. But, so one of the first things we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the electrical. We're not gonna be really pulling any electrical apart per se, but we are right above the alternator and stuff, and it's just good practice anyways. So, you guys have seen before, it, typically on a uh, Group 75 or 78, you've got the little eight millimeter threaded bolt there on the side, being that we've got the extra ground kit and all that stuff from the WS6 store. I've got a half inch and then a five eighths. And we'll go ahead and get those off and then we'll go ahead and work on getting our fluid out. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna get as much fluid out of the reservoir as you can because we are gonna be taking the lines off and everything. And it just helped with make, you're gonna get some mess. You're gonna get some fluid out of there. We're at least gonna to try to get as much out as possible so it'll be at least mess. Now, I've got a Mighty Vac system here or whatever. Not everybody's just gonna have one of these laying around. You can easily go to Walmart, Harbor Freight, or get on Amazon or anything to find a little syringe pump and go ahead and, and get the fluid out of there pretty easily. We'll try to find one for you guys and put a link to one or something on the, the page. We're gonna do, ah, geez. there we go. Okay. And just like that. Really not much capacity in those reservoirs. Not a lot. So we got our fluid out. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and go over here and take our belt loose. This is what we'll be pulling that pulley off and everything. And you just want to come over here a little bit and then you slide it off the water pump there. Give you enough slack. And in this case, I'm just gonna leave that resting there. And it's not gonna hurt anything. That way we'll go ahead and get the belt out of the way. And Nick here's gonna work on, we're gonna go ahead and pull that pulley off so we can actually get to the pump. 
So we're going to be using the remover tool to remove the plastic pulley. So you're going to need, it's a 5 8 wrench and a 13 16 wrench. And you're going to use these two halves. Let's see which side goes around here. It's mm -hmm. kind of hard to see down in here. Great thing is GM gives you so much room to work Oh, with. yeah. So you're kind of fighting the upper radiator hose here. And then putting your outer shell over it. Kind of slide it all over if I have any room here. Let's try this again. I guess the good thing is we don't have to deal with that inline power steering cooler anymore. We're that is that true. Back. Yeah, that's even harder for some guys. <laughs> Definitely a mod worth doing while you're doing this kit is getting the upper hose that doesn't have the cooler in it, like we talked about before in the previous episode. It'd be a perfect time to go ahead and make that upgrade as well. Absolutely. Okay, so we got that shell on there, and you're going to go ahead and Tighten this up. And you're going to use your 13 16 here to hold the one, and you're going to spin the other one. Let's see. Show you guys here. And to give you guys a heads up, it's going to be snug pretty much the whole way coming off, or most of the way. It'll get a little easier as it goes, but don't worry if it feels tight. Makes a lovely sound, doesn't it? <laughs> and guys, what we're dealing with here, this is called a press fit. So it doesn't thread on or bolt on or anything like that. This, uh, these pulleys are machined a little bit smaller than the shaft themselves. Oh, there it goes. And that's what retains them on there. That loud popping sound you heard is it releasing, pretty much. And you might get a few of those pops as you're pulling it off, so don't be afraid. Uh, it's got to be close. Yeah, it takes a little bit. It's got to actually, you know, it's got a fair bit of. There, there it is. is. So that's about the hardest part of doing this job. Is getting that pulley off. And so to show you guys what's going on here, so like I was talking about earlier, this diameter here, the inside of this pulley is slightly, I think a thousandths or two or a couple thousandths, smaller than the diameter of the shaft, and that's where you get your press fit on there. And what this thing does is as he was doing was threading, and it was just pushing against that and pulling that pulley off. That was some of that popping and everything you heard on there. So now... This pulley here is going right into file 13 over there in the trash where it belonged from the beginning. So now we can go ahead and work on getting our pump off. Okay, so now that we got our pulley off, one of the next, the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and work on getting our lines. So you'll notice on these pumps, there's two lines. And this is typically what you're gonna see in most any power steering pump setup is you've got your pressure line. So as the pump spins, it sucks fluid down and pressurizes out through here, goes to the rack and the little valve back in there, a little two-way valve is what switches back and forth when you go from side to side. That's how you get your power assist steering in a nutshell. And then here on this side, you've got your return side. So this, after it goes through everything, it goes out, kind of makes its way through the cooler, goes round and round, and then comes back up and comes into the return side here to the, the reservoir. So most likely you've got a, clamp, a compression clamp like this 
on yours unless somebody's been in there and changed it at some point one of the best ways i found with these is like you know some kind of little side cutters or something i mean obviously these are some fancy dancy snap-ons but anything that'll get down in there will work what you're wanting to do is kind of separate that thing and pop it off the tabs there kind of get it to where it's loose enough if you're lucky you might get it loose enough to where you can just slide the hose off but i don't know if we're going to get that lucky got it a fair bit loose there Yep, okay. And I make a ma nice mess everywhere. So if you got some cool little vacuum caps or rubber caps, you can try to cap that off. But just accept you're going to make a little bit of a mess. But you can always go back through with some degreaser or cleaner or something, clean it up. You know, and, and but obviously you don't want to soak down your alternator. But anyways, we got that off. Now, we've, we typically what you're going to find is most likely a 16. Um, most of the stuff on these cars is metric. You're going to find some standard stuff. But... Typically on most power steering lines, you're either going to find a 16, a 17, or 18 millimeter uh, nut here. And it's got the, the either the flared end or like an O-ring end in there. We're going to go ahead and take that nut loose and set that to the side because this will bolt right up and directly into the new pump. But once we get that line off, we've got two bolts here. We're going to go ahead and take these out and then our pump's out of here. And there's your pressure line with your o-ring all right next we're going to be uh taking these two bolts out we have two 13s holding the pump to the bracket bolts out set them aside and we're going to get this thing out of the way okay and this is one of the big reasons right here for the upgrade is the difference here so you notice you got a seal out here well behind that seal is nothing more than just a bushing and the corvette pump that was a big upgrade and that's what he was talking about earlier is you've actually got a full-on bearing setup in here which is much more conducive to higher RPM stability and all that kind of fun jazz. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, why you would put just a bushing in something like that, I mean, something that you know it's a performance car, I mean, I understand pension pennies and stuff, but yeah, just, just a bad idea. But that's one of, it's a lot of what we do on this channel is identify that kind of stuff and make upgrades. So, but this was your whole thing, was your, 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 why you came to the Corvette pump was because you kept burning through what you said, like four of them or something like that. Absolutely, I went through four of these pumps and I, I tried different manufacturers and and there there's something in these reman pumps that is is just not uh, manufactured right anymore. Or I, I'm really not even sure they just don't hold up. And when you can get a bearing pump for pretty cheap off of Amazon or eBay or I, I mean they're readily available now I said well why not utilize that and as you can see the mounting is the same um, it's it's a very similar setup you guys see here the same port on the side and everything sure yeah so the F body line works and yeah it all matches up and the sad thing is that is an actual was an actual brand new Cardone unit so, because yeah, I always try to avoid any reman stuff because been there, done that, especially owning a shop. We don't really deal with them, but yeah, it was a brand new pump, and I've already smoked it within a couple of you know months, having whining issues and a bit notchy and different, you know, some just different quirky stuff. I knew I was just like, you know, it was time, even with that cooler and everything. But this is a great visual side by side here for you guys as well, and why this pump is going straight into the trash. You see, I mean, plastic, I mean, uh, yeah. It, um, I've heard stories, I've never witnessed it yet, but these things can come apart. And just, I mean, you're talking about going right through the hood. Anybody who owns any of these cars knows those hoods are not cheap and not easy to get, let alone what else it might actually shred or go through. I mean, like just like, you know, a shrapnel pipe bomb going off in there or something. But as you can see here, you got much more openings, you know, where you can easily get to. Saves you that headache like you were seeing earlier that we were going through with trying to pull the pulley off. Now, if, down the road, if you ever do have to actually change the pump, yes, you will have to pull it off. 
but that's the whole thing here is we're trying to prevent having to do that near as often and if at all. So now you'll have access to everything and you got to still pulley much more stability at higher speed, higher RPMs. You don't have to worry about that thing coming apart. So. Absolutely. That's the biggest part of the upgrade is you're replacing with quality parts. Sure. Cool. And now the fun part is now we're going to do all the upgrading. So as an added bonus, like we were talking about earlier in this, so this next step is not required for this upgrade. I just wanted to go ahead and do this while I was in here. I mean, it was only like 70 or 80 bucks for the kit, like off Amazon or off the internet. Just a perfect time to do it. And that's that ICT fillet aluminum bracket upgrade kit. Um, great little upgrade here. Cool thing is it come with really nice clean instructions. It's really simple install. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and get that the base on and everything. And then we'll go ahead and work on getting our new pump and everything together. So. All right, so we got the pump and everything out of the way. You can see the factory cast aluminum bracket here. This is what we're going to be removing and upgrading with that new ICT kit. Like I said, this is not required to install this upgraded pump. Just a nice little upgrade we're doing since we're already in here. Just kind of makes sense. So we've got three 15 millimeter bolts here. We're going to go ahead and take those on out. And we can go ahead and clean our surface there. And then we can go ahead and work on installing our new bracket. All right, so now that we got our old bracket off, what we went ahead and did, it was went ahead and blowed out these holes in here to make sure our threads are good and clean. I mean, if they are blind holes, you want to make sure there's no obstructions in there or anything to bottom out to give you a false torque or anything like that. Now, what we've got here is this bracket here, which is going to mount like meow. And then you've got the spacers here. We're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite 243 on there. You could use red if you wanted. Seems a bit extreme in this case. I'm just going to do some blue just to make sure nothing comes back out. You notice these are like a recessed head hex. And it takes a H6, 6 millimeter Allen in there to tighten it down. So we're going to go ahead and start these or get some blue Loctite on them, start them, and then go around and snug them down. They don't offer or show any kind of torque spec in the instructions. And of course, it's Saturday, so they're closed. Uh, we don't want to wait till Monday. General rule of thumb on a lot of this stuff with the LS's on the fronts, so like the water pump bolts, you know, timing cover bolts, and these smaller, like six, you know, eight millimeter, six millimeter threaded bolts. Typically, what I've seen is most of those torques fall around somewhere around 18 to 22 foot pounds. So that'll give you a good general idea. I do plan on calling them to find out, to see, just out of my curiosity, what they recommend or if they have any recommendations. But nonetheless, that should give you a good ballpark on an idea on how to because the last thing you want to do is you definitely want to over tighten them and pull the threads out of that aluminum head because then you're going to really have a bad day. So now we got our main bracket bolted down with our spacers. What I'm going to do here is you've got one of these long bolts. You got three of them in there, and you got your two and a quarter inch spacer. We're going to go ahead. We got a little bit of blue Loctite on there. We're going to go ahead and start that one in here. We're not going to tighten it yet. Just go ahead and put a few threads in there where it's pretty good. And then what we're going to do is come back and put our pump in. And you're going to have these two through bolts here. They're going to go through this bracket, through the pump, into this main bracket here. You've got a third bolt that mounts onto the, the, bottom, of the or bottom of the pump. And that's part of what you know, makes it more stable and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's one of these little right here. So now we're going to do is go and set our pump in, start our bolts, and then we can come back and tighten everything down. Uh, get you a few threads started in there and we'll come back and start this one and then start our little bottom one down there because you know we've talked about this before on the channel when you got multiple bolt points like that you always want to start everything first you go try to snug one down and the other ones don't want to line up you go right back and loosen it again so just save yourself a little bit of headache there
So a little tip here. It really helps when you're trying to start those bolts. If you just kind of stick your tongue out the right way and your leg up and arm up saying, I'm a little teapot, it tends to help you get them lined up. At least that's what it feels like when you're trying to start everything at first. All right, now that we got them all started, we're gonna go ahead and run them down. And like I said, I'm just gonna go ahead and torque them at about 18 foot pounds. I will follow up with them just to verify, see what they think. If there's any changes, we will definitely put a little caveat down at the bottom of the video, um, a note down there for you guys, but pretty good general rule of thumb, 18 foot pounds should put you in the ballpark there. And these are also, by the way, these are a 10 millimeter head. You know, these other ones were the, the countersink ones with the uh, six millimeter hex. These are a 10 millimeter regular socket. Go ahead and snug those down and get to the next unit. All right, so now that we got our pump mounted and everything torqued down, what we're going to do is work on hooking up our pressure line next. We're going to go ahead and change out this O ring here. And I just come in with like a nice little pick, walk around and pull that off you want to well it's going to go down to no marin's land but that's okay we're not going to reuse it one thing you want to check for is make sure there's no burrs or anything crazy some people like to get a little crazy and ham-fisted and over tighten these things and they'll flare out a little bit bad and they don't want to go back in so if you have any kind of issue that might be what you have if somebody's over tightened i think at some point and has over flared it now that being said this would be a really good time my lines are almost you know, basically brand new we changed them not too long ago so the, um, this would be a really good time to go ahead and change your pressure hose and return hose and stuff like that. Take a look at them. I mean, if they're original or been on there a long time, it'd be really good because the inside, it might look fine on the outside, but on the inside, that hose can degrade and those parts come out and start clogging stuff, causing notchy issues with steering and all that kind of fun jazz. So it'd be a perfect time to do it. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get a new O-ring on here and go ahead and mount this thing back up and snug it down and then move on to the next step. All right, so one thing we did notice that we run into here with the ICT bracket is, if you'll notice, it's flush across here and raises out because of the spacers. The stock one is more further back, and then it has the protrusion where the pump is. So this gives some more room here. And the problem to run into, even with the Corvette pump, which seems to have the line a little bit further spaced out, as Nick pointed out earlier, um, we're still, it's not lining up there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put like a socket or a piece of pipe or something in here so it doesn't kink, but we're gonna go ahead and try to massage that line on back down to where it'll go in here and not rub against this as well because you don't want it laid up against and rubbing and it'll eventually wear a hole through it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll go ahead and start our line. All right, so next we have our billet reservoir. So also comes with two fittings. So I have the O-rings already installed on here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna thread these on in first. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these fittings up. And you just need to snug them. Windows end up being a 23 and a 19. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to test fit our reservoir and then our mounting bracket. So what I'm going to need is a 15 in extension, and then I'm going to get right up in here under these brake lines and take that nut off to mount our reservoir bracket. So we're going to take this nut off, set it aside, and what we're going to do is test fit this reservoir. So basically it just sits in the taper and holds like that. So it's going to slide in there like that and there's a little bit of room for adjustment. Um, you just have to fine tune it. So 
So we'll start this nut. And that actually lines up pretty well right there. Now, sometimes between the Camaros and the Trans Ams and the different hoods that are available, there could be a little bit of variation in the hood and the clearance. So you always want to make sure before you go ahead and tighten this all up, just kind of make sure that you have a decent hood clearance here. Um, so I'm going to snug that up. So now that we've got the reservoir mounted in place, a good way to check the clearance between the top of it and the hood is with some Play-Doh. Due to the differences in your Camaro, Trans Am, some of them have a flat hood, some are a cowl hood, just to make sure that we're not going to have any issues because we definitely don't want the top of this hitting into our hood. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking some Play-Doh and putting it on the cap like that. And we're going to close the hood and we're going to see if it touches. And it looks like it touched a little bit there, so we know that we have a little bit of clearance there between the cap and the hood. So now that we've got our reservoir mounted, something else to remember as well, if you do have any issues with the touching, uh, the bracket is flexible enough that you can, you can adjust it, fine tune it, just to make sure that it doesn't hit. So next we have our 5 8 feed hose. So basically it's going to be running from the reservoir from the big barb to the top of the pump. And we're going to route it. Kind of test fit it here. Loosen that clamp up. It's a little snug. Well, that's what we want. Okay, and then I'm going to route this to the top of the pump. I like to leave the hose a little bit long just in case to test fit it. You'd rather have it a little longer than too short. Push that all the way on there and kind of bend it into place here. So our return hose here, I have included a brass barb fitting to basically extend where your return line was up to your new reservoir point. So we're going to loosen these clamps up. Let's slide this on a barb. And we're going to attach our barb here. And we have a new crimp clamp here. We're going to crimp that. Now, if you don't have crimp clamps, you can always use another hose clamp. Now we have all of our lines hooked up, we're going to make sure that this return hose is not in the way of our belt drive, is not going to hit on our pulley. So we need to make sure of that. So anywhere you can route it. Okay, so we've got our hoses all routed. So it looks like our return hose is kind of out of the way. It's not touching our header. It's not going to be touching on our belt drive. Um, 
So you just want to be mindful, spend an extra minute, and, and really make sure your hoses are in a good spot. And also now on this car, we're actually running an external power steering cooler. So it's running out in the front here, and then it's routing on back up and into our reservoir. So I highly recommend running an additional, running a power steering cooler with this kit as well, just to keep everything cool, more fluid capacity. <clears throat> so, and then next we're going to be installing our pulley. So finally, our last step is going to be installing this pulley. So we have our pulley installer tool and it's going to thread into the pump shaft and you're going to draw the pulley on by turning this. And there's not a lot of room here with this hose in the way. So you wanna make sure that you thread this bolt all the way in first and make sure that it bottoms out before turning this nut. Okay, so it feels like the bolt is bottomed out. Now we're gonna run this down. I'm going to hold the end of this bolt with the one wrench. And it's tight with this hose here, but, and we're going to Turn this nut and draw the pulley in. They don't make this easy. They really don't. But the good part is once this thing is pressed on, you shouldn't have to take it back off. Okay. So now that we're bottomed out, are fully installed and as you can see the shaft of the pump is flush with the edge of the pulley that's what you want you want to make sure that this is bottomed out as far as it'll go all right so now that we got our belt back on and everything went over kind of triple checked everything all our clamps are good and tight belts all good and on everything got our hose up everything got our hoses routed out of the way and next we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill it full of fluid. Now, to get fluid in there, when you go to prime one of these, you really want it off the ground. You don't wanna be trying to work the wheel back and forth and prime this thing with pressure on it. You wanna kinda, of, typically what I, I normally do, there's a million different ways you can do things, um, is you can go ahead and start the car, let it run for just a second, it'll suck fluid down, you can top it back off, and then after that, with it off of the air, you don't have pressure on the wheels, you can ease it back and forth, a little more each way and that allows it to kind of work through and work the air through so you're not burning up the pump so um while well, he's filling up the fluid i'll go ahead and reconnect the battery and we'll go ahead and work on getting this thing wrapped up for you guys synopsis of uh, installing one of these kits here like I said Nick makes an awesome kit here I think it's really cool I'm really excited about having it on the car and just in general it looks a lot cooler than the factory one but the, the issues that we're fixing with the possibility of this thing catching fire in the leaks and not having to worry about crappy power steering or you know coming and going and all that I'm super excited about it and he's got a great kit here and your website and everything again was absolutely so my website you can contact me it's fritzautomotive.net um, it's just a basic website I have set up for now. Um, you can go on there, you can contact me, fill out with your name and your email address, and I will get back to you on placing your order. And also you're on Facebook as well. I am. Yeah, yeah, I go on Facebook from time to time and I post on the forums. What is your, what's your Facebook account or your, is it, um, you have one for the channel or for the, is it? Yeah, so I have, it's uh, Nick's Power Steering Fix Kit. Um, I don't know if it's able to be searched up easily. You may, you may be able to actually, but I post up, I have some customer reviews on there and I do post updates from time to time on the kit, on the setup, and just to keep everybody informed. Cool, well, uh, 
Nick, once again, man, I appreciate it, buddy. Awesome. This is awesome. Thank great you. Great feeling vibration, and I think you got a great kit here. I'm excited about it. We uh, we were definitely going to be recommending these to our customers here at the shop and installing these because, I mean, really, it is nothing to it. I mean, if you're not doing that ICD part, it gets it even easier. I mean, really, you know, you do it in an hour or two in an afternoon in your driveway, and you're on your way to fixing a lot of issues with your car. So, anyways, once again, I appreciate you guys watching, and remember, until next time, stock is not an option.